In this video, we'll be discussing about the production of rubber. Rubber is seen all around us, right from our slippers or chappals to surgical gloves to toys like this floating duck and tires. Yes, that's a major one. And, you know, boots, the soles of our shoes and even the road. We see it everywhere. It's really important for our daily modern life. Let's see how it's produced. Now, rubber has two types mainly. We have natural rubber and we have synthetic rubber. Now, synthetic rubber is made of chemicals. We're not going to discuss the production of that. We'll be focusing on the production of production of natural rubber. Okay, so uh, step one for the production of natural rubber is the collection of sap. What is sap? Let's discuss. So, do you see this image here? Can you see this gummy thing that is slowly dripping out of the bark of this tree? I'm sure you would have come across some kind of gum which, you know, leaks out of trees or flows out of trees like this or the bark of a tree. That exactly is sap. Now, rubber also comes from sap, but not the sap of any random tree. There is a particular tree called the rubber tree. And let me show you a picture. There it is. And that produces a white colored sap, which then is, you know, processed to produce rubber. The rubber tree is planted in large numbers and we make small cuts for the sap to flow out and into our collection bucket here. Okay, so this right here, this white, let's mark it, is the sap from the rubber tree. Okay, the sap from the rubber tree is also called latex and you may see that word in your textbooks. Okay, so step one was collecting the sap, but the sap is a liquidy thing. What's step two? Step two is coagulation or thickening of the sap. Coagulation may seem like a very fancy word and you may be wondering what it actually is, but it's very simple. Let's say you have some milk here and you add to this milk a few drops of lemon juice. Okay, what happens? I'm sure you would have seen this being done at home and you would see that this milk then turns into paneer, right? Now, this entire process is an example of coagulation. You can see a similar process when milk turns into curd. You would also see a similar process when if you by some chance get a small cut on your hand or your finger, you would see that blood comes and becomes, you know, solid at that point. That is also an example of the coagulation of blood. Okay, so coagulation is just basically thickening of this rubber sap. Okay, so let's see an image for that. So what actually happens is we pour out this rubber sap into different tubs. Let's let's write it down. It's poured into tubs. And then what we do is we add some acid. If you remember, we added lemon juice into the milk. Here we add an acid into the sap. And that is then allowed to set. After a few hours, what you get is just the way milk turns into paneer. This rubber sap will then turn into a thick slab. Okay. Now we're done with collecting the sap, we're done with coagulation, next comes the step of drying it. What happens is there's a lot of water content in the sap. Now we want to get rid of all that water. How do we remove the water? That's what we'll discuss next. So look at this picture here. Can you see these two rollers here? There's my first roller and there's the second roller. What we do is we push that, you know, thickened sap between the rollers and then we squeeze out the water much like how uh, we would do it to remove water from paneer as well, right? Just that we don't use rollers for paneer, but yeah. So we remove all the water like this and let's write it down, squeezing water out, okay? And then we dry it out, just the way you dry clothes, okay? The only difference is that we usually don't do it in sunlight, but we do it inside a room where we burn some wood and can you see all that smoke there? Let me just show you the smoke, right? All the smoke here. And uh, that helps the rubber sheets to dry out soon. And so we do that in a smokehouse. Let's write that down. Okay. And then in the end, after a few weeks of drying, you get dried rubber sheets. Okay. So what's the next step after drying? The next step is mixing. Have you ever looked at rubber bands and wondered how you could get so many different rubber bands from, you know, essentially the same rubber tree. Well, what we do at this stage is mixing color and other chemicals that control the properties of the rubber. That's our next step. We mix colors into the rubber and then knead the rubber so that the colors get evenly mixed up. Okay, what's next? Next, the next step is curing. Now, this is not about uh, someone being unwell who needs to be cured. This is a process that is again Sounds like a weird word like coagulation, but it's very simple to understand. Have you ever, you know, squeezed out glue 
like you know fevicol or some kind of white kind of glue like this and then found that after a few hours a few hours later you find that this becomes something like this right that whole process of that liquid becoming this hard solid is called curing now one thing you must understand is that curing is not just like liquid turning into solid it is not a physical change it is actually a chemical change so we can't heat this solid this cured rubber piece and make it liquid again that's not possible if you carefully looked at that piece you would see that there are a few pieces which are not cured completely it's kind of overall done otherwise okay so this process this chemical process is called curing and we need something like that with the rubber as well uh, so so what actually happened when the glue got cured let's let's note that down we see that the glue is sticky and the glue was also flowy right and what happened after it got cured it became not sticky right and it also became hard and not flowy right and that's something what happens with rubber as well when we're producing rubber when we're doing the kneading and mixing the rubber becomes a little sticky a little flowy and what we want to do is to cure it and make it hard and the method for curing that we use in rubber is called vulcanization this is the most popular curing method used for rubber now fevicol just dried up when it was outside uh, you know lying around to cure rubber we need to add some chemicals and that chemical is sulfur sulfur is added to the rubber so that it becomes hard and it gets properties that we want so basically a chemical reaction occurs that does this okay so what are the properties that rubber gains after vulcanization let's write that down properties first of all rubber becomes much much harder much much more durable right okay let's say you're making tires you want the rubber to be hard and not flowy and sticky right so you need vulcanization or curing to process the rubber next comes more elasticity let's say you have a rubber band that you want to make or a balloon that you want to make you want the uh, balloon to be elastic you want the rubber band to be elastic you want it to be stretchy right and that can also be done by curing by vulcanization the next thing you want the rubber to be resistant to wear and tear right and that is also an important property that you want in the rubber which is obtained by vulcanization so a few of the products that are made using vulcanization let's write it down products made using vulcanized rubber so here we have an eraser here that's also made by vulcanized rubber tires are made by vulcanized rubber you need really hard uh, tires because otherwise they would wear out really soon and you, even for balloons you need vulcanized rubber okay so that's actually the process for the production of rubber 